Here is another environment. This is my dining room. And there are three pendant lights above the table. You can see the Arduino on the table. And you can also see a little light meter. And the light meter is measuring around 290, almost 300 lux. If we go over to the computer, we can see that there are three columns. Um, the numbers are 6250, 6972, 73100. Uh, for each of those, the first number is the row, the second number is the column. Remember those numbers. So let's now go over to the dimmer and lower the light levels substantially, pretty much all the way. And this is what the environment looks like. My iPhone is barely able to pick out things. If we go over to the computer, we can again see that there are three points of light being detected. And it's a bit out of focus. The numbers are 6150, 7072, 73100. About the same as before. And if we look at the light meter, it's actually quite hard to see here. I have to press it and freeze it. And if I hold it over here, you can see it. We have just about under one lux of light, 0.7 lux of light. So I lowered the light levels by a factor of 300, and this method still worked. So if any of you were concerned that pinhole cameras don't work in this type of light environment, well, here's proof otherwise. Here is another example to show that you can get a wide field of view with flat printed optics. Here are the same three pendant lights in the Arduino. If we go over to the computer, we can see the same three numbers, 6250, 6971, 72, and 100. But you also see a fourth column, a fourth light, flickering in and out. And that number is about 130 and 60. So what is that fourth column? Well, I turned the lights on in the kitchen. There is that light right there. So that's being picked up by this Arduino in addition to these three lights.